Uh, yeah. Where is here, exactly? Oh, stop being so silly. You know this is your favorite ice cream shop. Oh, right. From when I was a little filly. And I convinced the original owner to come out of retirement to make you your all-time favorite dessert. <laughs> Oh, God. Was she an ant when she was little? Ah, oh boy. Why has Rarity been getting hit with the idiot stick lately? First she messed up a restaurant, then she made up a story about her friends, now she can't figure out how to spend time with her sister. Ah, okay, that's a mean way to open up this review, as it doesn't entirely reflect my feelings on the episode. So what exactly did I think of Forever Philly? Was it good? Was it bad? Or was it just okay? Rarity is busy setting up shop in her Canterlot boutique when she finds old pictures of her spending time with Sweetie Belle, making her feel nostalgic and homesick for her. She decides to go back to Ponyville, leaving her shop in the care of her assistant, where she interludes with the CMC helping out Zipper Will with her dog as part of a CMC mission. Apple Bloom and Scootaloo decide to take care of the assignment themselves and allow Sweetie to spend time with Rarity. So while Rarity tries to spend time with Sweetie Belle while having absolutely no clue how to do it, Zipper Will is becoming more discouraged over her bond with her puppy losing its spark. So where exactly do the problems lie in this setup? It doesn't seem like a bad idea, and it sounds like it can have a lot of heartfelt potential behind it. Well, what's wrong with it is Rarity's complete cluelessness when spending time with Sweetie Belle. I get she's in a nostalgic state of mind, but it just makes her look incredibly oblivious when she's supposed to be smarter than this. At first it seems like a little problem, but it quickly gets stale and annoying. Why would Rarity still think that her sister would want to eat a shake that small? And the entire second act of the episode feels like this, with Rarity constantly boring Sweetie Belle by placing her into interests she's clearly not into anymore. It's actually kind of embarrassing to watch. And when Sweetie Belle tries to knock some sense into Rarity, she gets into a fit, acting like it's her fault. It's very clear that she's thinking more of herself than Sweetie Belle, which is supposed to be the whole reason she even came out here. Not only is she being thoughtless, but also inexcusably selfish. Even if that's the point of the episode and a necessity for the message that it's going for, it still feels like Rarity is a complete idiot for not knowing something that should be so common knowledge to her, especially after what she went through to gain Sweetie Belle's approval in Sisterhood Social. She never even stopped to, oh, I don't know, ask Sweetie Belle what she'd like to do. If this visit was all about spending time with her sister, she could have at least allowed her to suggest an activity instead of doing all of it by herself. It would have made sense, and it would have solved the problem nearly in an instant. This also leads into another issue I had with the episode. The second act suffers from a repetitive tone due to Rarity's ignorance, and it ends up dragging out the pacing. Because of how easily you'll get annoyed by Rarity, you'll feel like it's going way slower than it actually is. Even the opening drags out by having two entire minutes just focusing on Sassy Saddles freaking out with Rarity reassuring her over the state of the shop. It feels like the story could have done more interesting things with its concept, but so much of it is focused on lackluster moments and annoying characterization. But that's actually as bad as the episode gets because there's several other good things that even it out. There's a good sense of continuity surrounding the CMC accomplishing their missions for people around town. It shows that they're continuing to move forward as characters and showing more growth in their development. Their first scene establishes the progress they make in helping blank flanks get their cutie marks as well as finding their calling in life. And I really like the photo seen across the clubhouse acting as both callbacks to previous episodes and reminders of some of their greatest achievements as well as the friendships they've built. It reminds them of all the great things they've done for others, which gives them motivation to keep doing what they do. 
The episode even makes use of a character that was previously established three seasons ago to act as a bulk of the story. The subplot with Zipper Wolf and her dog is much more subtle in its presentation, and it gives the audience a much-needed break from Rarity's annoyance. It also makes more sense for Zipper Wolf to pamper her dog since she's less aware of the situation being a kid, and it's fairly common for people to pamper their dogs even as they get older. And the dog isn't really annoyed as much as he is bored. So the things Zipper Will does with him have a less awkward reaction to them. The moral is also a very sound one, focusing on the difficulties as well as the benefits of going up and growing out of previous interests. Sometimes it's hard to realize that some people's interests change over time, but we can still hang out and relate with each other despite these differences. Sometimes it's even harder to notice that we've even grown up at all. But even if we grow up, we don't have to grow apart from each other. We just have to find different things to bond over. It's a very touching and important lesson to learn, and it's actually smart in how it ties the two plot threads together in the story through that message. And I really, really love the way Sweetie Belle is characterized. She's shown to be a number of things that help her stand out strongly from the other CMC. She's very outspoken and wise when guiding others and giving them advice. She expresses a firm level of initiative, making her more of a leader amongst the three. And she firmly explains her change in interest and taste, which is understandable since she's most likely aged in the last three to four years in canon. Her growth in a literal sense is presented in a steady way and isn't forced like it could have been, which allows it to fit into the story much more effectively. It takes time to focus on how different she is compared to earlier seasons without relying on it, which gives the episode a better sense of focus. And her deadpan expressions are the best piece of humor in the episode. It plays off of Rarity's obnoxious behavior very well, and it feels relatable due to how ridiculous she acts around her. They don't feel too annoyed or too relaxed, which allows her to detest her situation while still presenting a level of patience with Rarity. It's only after she feels insulted by her not knowing anything about her that she rightfully puts her foot down and stands up for her dignity. And after seeing Rarity coming to understand what she was explaining, she admits that she always appreciated the idea of spending time with her, even if there were times that she was being annoying. And now that Rarity understands that Sweetie Belle is into other things, the two can bond together much better over new interests and activities. I can't say Forever Philly is on the same level as Rock Solid Friendship because in several ways the episode has more redeeming qualities to it, and its tone really isn't as repetitive. If anything, I'd say it's a good episode despite its flaws. With a good story, good characterization, and a relatable moral, it's certainly one of the better episodes of Season 7 so far. It's an episode that I'll certainly be seeing again sometime soon. Misanthropony, over and out.